Hello everyone, welcome back for my last of the series for a while so I can catch up with more books, but these are my five star books. So we started at one and all the way up through all of the many books I have read and now on to my five stars. So these are the books that stand out while I've read a lot of books. Four stars are still really good books. These are just the ones that kind of I would definitely go back to. They were above and beyond what I expected. Like these are like the really good books. So let's jump into the list. So number one was In Bulk from the Sabbath Essentials. Again, these books, some of them they tended to not be that great. And this one was quite good. It was also the first one I read, so maybe there was some bias with that because it was like, wow, this is like such a great thing. <laughs> and then as you go through, you realize there's a lot of formula involved, but being the first book in the series I picked up, I was really impressed. And it's one of those books that it's like, I'm glad the whole series exists. Some I like more than others, and this one was pretty good. Then we have Dedicant Devotee Priest by Stephanie Woodfield. This is one of those books that I feel like everybody should read at some point if you are going to be like a pagan witch. Meaning you can be witch and be other things attached to the name, but for the most part we're either going to be kind of Wicca based or pagan based, but of course you have like the Christians of the witches and like there's other denominations within witchcraft that you can kind of attach to but if you are doing a lot of deity work this is a book that I think everybody should read. If you are considering any kind of like long-term relationship with deities let alone moving into priestessing and priesting any of that stuff this is a must. She writes so well and it was so interesting. I don't agree with everything in the book but a lot of it. I think the one thing that did stand out is that she's like, don't call it working with. And I'm like, but I, but we are, we are working together. I am working on this relationship. It is an effort of mine. Other than that, it was a really good book. Then we have the Beltane book from the Sabbath Essentials. This one, I was so surprised because honestly, and this is something I'm going to talk about on Patreon at some point in the nearby future, <laughs> but this need to add in so much sexuality and just focusing just on like two organs and that's about it. It gets really old and Beltane is one of those things that I am prepared <laughs> to judge harshly because it's so forced at everybody and as somebody who identifies as ace it gets kind of ick because it's like every time you are so isolated. Every time it's really pushing a very specific narrative for Beltane and I'm tired of it. Beltane can mean more than sex. And so this book did that and I really enjoyed it for that reason. Then we have Instant Magic by Penzac. He is just so good at spells and stuff and just the way he writes and like presents information is so good. That's why I've gone through Inner Temple and now Outer Temple on Patreon because it's so interesting to see what he makes you think about and try out and this is just another one of those books that's really good to read and have as kind of a toolkit to use. Then yet again, you can tell the books that I really enjoyed because they keep popping up. Again, The Sabbath Essentials, <laughs> but this time it's for Midsummer. I love Deborah Blake anyways and this is one that she had written and it's a really good book. It is one that I am planning because as of, I think you're going to see this the day I record it because I am behind. <laughs> My books are ahead, other content not so much. So I think you will see this on the day I'm recording. But tomorrow is the solstice. This is one of those books I'm going to go grab and flip through because I knew there were good ideas that I wanted to implement for this time of the year. And again, if you're going back to a book time and time again, it's usually an indicator it's a good book. Then we have The Witch's Shield. This is one of Penzac's books that is all about like having, he kind of focuses on like three different areas of magic. Protection, which is this one, love magic and prosperity magic. And this one was so good, so great for doing your protective things. Again, do I agree with everything? No. <laughs> I'm still, I, I don't know, I guess I would qualify in more of the Grey Witch area because there is a time and a place where it's like, if you're infringing into my space, I'm allowed to defend my space. And whatever that would entail, whether it is like gently pushing you away, reflecting what you're sending at me back to you, 
whatever in his approach is just send love to them. And I'm like, some people don't though. They just, they get what, I'm just helping karma. And so other than that, this was a really good book. Then we have The Witch's Coin. Now this is a book that's about prosperity from Penzac. And like, I feel like this was step one <laughs> from this book. And I've been doing it for so long. I don't remember when I read through this. I feel like it was like maybe a year ago at this point. But this is one of those books <laughs> that it was like, well, <laughs> cool. So with this book, the first step was to declutter your entire house, go through stuff because if you are holding on to like stagnant energy and you're surrounded by clutter, like it's really hard to get prosperity magic to work. It is true. I've been trying it and the more I declutter and clean, it does work out better. But my god, that can be difficult when you have a house of ADHD and like clutter just accumulating and like low energy and it's it's a lot it's and we have like I think it's we're up to like six dead people stuff that we have in our house so it's a lot but working through that this is one of those books that it's like once I declutter I can pick this back up and resume going through this book then we have Norse mythology by Neil Gaiman this is the best book I have yet to read when it comes to mythology now I do have some favoritism towards the Norse but <laughs> I cannot read the like original text. It is so academic, so flippin' boring, confusing, just, it's just awful to try and trudge through. This book made mythology interesting. And I think this is how our ancestors would have told the tales of all of the gods and heroes and everything. This is how they would have been presented. But when they were written down by people who didn't actually even care about it, it was written down by the victors, not the people who actually believed the stuff. So like, I already have a hard time with mythology on a good day, but like, typically when you read through mythology, it's so flat and boring. And this book brings the stories to life. Each of the gods that he mentions, because he doesn't talk about them all, but he talks about a lot of them and the big players. And when they come, they all have their own personalities and yet he portrays it so well. Like this is the book that made me think I could actually care about mythology. So good. I've reread it a bunch of times. It's just one of those books that I will continue to read all the time. Then we have A Year and a Day of Everyday Witchcraft by Deborah Blake. This one is one of her little short fat books and it's so great. It gives you so many ideas of different things you could do in a year for a witch. Then we have Cunningham's Magical Sampler. This is a collection of his things that he had written like articles and stuff because a lot of the witchy authors will do things like the almanacs and stuff where they just write little articles. It's like if they took all of those of Scott Cunningham and put them together. It's a great, like, just random topics covered. It's a good read. Then we have Whispers of the Moon. This is a book that personally I love all of Scott Cunningham's work pretty much. Some are not like my favorite, but I can appreciate where he came from for those. And like, this is the story of his life. And it's always, I just love bibliographies of like not famous big people. Granted, he did get a little famous in a very niche community. But like, it's just fascinating to read about other people's lives. And like, every time I've read it, like different points stand out every time. Every time I read through it, it kind of has a different narrative point. And I don't know how it does that, but it does. And it's really good. If you cared about Scott Cunningham and his life, great resource to read through. Then we have my love-hate book that I will forever remember as a love-hate book. And that is Inner Temple of Witchcraft. So ITOW is a book that kind of kickstarted my marriage <laughs> because this was the book that my husband now had brought up way back when of like, hey, you should read this book. It's really good. I bought it. Do you think I read it? Did anything with it? Nope, it sat on a shelf for years. <laughs> and then we got together and he's like, you should do that book. And so I have finally done it. And it took forever. I tried to do it, I think it was like 2017 or 2018. Then I have tried to go through it and I give up and I go through it and I give up and I go through it and I give up. And then eventually I 
finally completed this book and it took so long. But the ironic part is that I still use the stuff from this book all the time. Like I will sit there and be like, okay, yeah, so this is how I cast circle now. Like how he trains you to cast circle and do like astral work and stuff like that from this book. I completely implemented, streamlined that right away into my practice. And other things too, I can't remember if it was from this one or Outer Temple, but he has you like cast the circle with like rings of specific colors and then like to get rid of it, like the method he uses is like you kind of like pull it back like a shower curtain, but like full circle. And I love that method and it works fantastic. And this is just one of those books that I constantly am like, if you want to start on witchcraft, Yep, this is a good one to start with, because seriously, yeah. Then we have Supermarket Magic. This is one of those books I'm excited to go back into, but it's mostly where I'm going to add things in as I need to, and when I have funding to do, because a lot of this, like, I love that it's ingredients you can find at a grocery store. That is huge. And it's just one of those things where it's like, when I plan to do certain things, like, I'm going to refer back to this book, all the time. Then we have Earth Power by Scott Cunningham. This is one of those books that it is just so ironically down to earth. Just easy, chill. I love this kind of book. Not ceremonial, not really big into having very fancy ingredients, just kind of use what you got and I love that. Then we have Advanced Candle Magic. I loved this one. I hated the beginner book for it. It was so bad. It was like such a like disappointment to be like, wow, this one was really good. And then you go to the other one, you're like, what happened? So this one was fantastic. I would, just wouldn't do the first book. It just didn't exist. Then we have The Truth About Witchcraft by Scott Cunningham. This is one of those books. I would love to have a like copy or two on hand ready to give away. Because if you lend a book, you may never see it again. So just plan that you're never seeing that again. You just gifted a book away. So never give away your personal like favorite library book of your own personal library. But like, this is one of those books that I absolutely need to have copies of. So that when somebody's like, well, what is a witch? And what is it? And blah, 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 blah. You can just casually pull out, because it's not a big book. You just casually pull that out of your bag and just be like, listen, if you're serious, read this and then come to me with questions. Because this answers pretty much everything you're going to ask. So read that, because he's going to have more patience than I will. And if they're actually serious, they will, but most of the time they just want to bother you with questions that you don't actually, like they don't want the answers to. Then we have the 2023 Witch's Companion. There were some fantastic articles in this one. Some of the other years haven't been like super fantastic, but this one was really good. Then we have Wicca Essential Oils by Lisa Chamberlain. This is one of those books I cannot wait to go buy and start experimenting with because I love her books and I really didn't anticipate loving her books and yet I do. Then we have Wicca, A Guide for the Solitary Practitioner. This is my first legit witchy book that I bought that has been in my like possession for like going on 14 years. I have a special place in my heart for this book and every time I read it, it's still good. I love this book and I am biased because it is the first one I bought, but it's so good. It's not the first one I read. It's the first one I like actually bought. So like, it's, it's still good though. Then we have Taking Up the Runes. This is such a good book if you are curious about the runes. All of the other ones honestly are very like divination only focused. This gives you like so much context and gives you like all the different like perspectives on like the big names in the community. So good. I wish she had more on the Norse in general. I know she only has like a handful, if that, of titles and it's quite the bummer. I wish she had more. Then we have hand fasting and wedding rituals. Obviously I used that when we got married. I loved this book. It was a good resource for ceremony stuff. It did have some stuff missing that I wish it had, but overall, if you're getting married and you're a witch, it's a good book. Go grab it. Then we have Living Wicca by Cunningham. Again, this is a really good resource. I still refer back to these books. This one and the predecessor, which is the one we just talked about. Those two are really good. Then we have Wicca Book of Spells by Lisa Chamberlain. Again, I love her. I didn't know that I would. And now I regret not getting her books forever. 
but she's fantastic. I cannot wait to buy all of her books. And then lastly, this is the book, honestly, I mean, it's been a while since I read this one. So I have more after this, but I haven't added them to my master list yet. But this is the book I am so stoked for. So this is The Craft by Dorothy Morrison. And it's one of those books I personally would love to work through. And it will probably be one of the Patreon books we go through at some point because I love it. There's just certain little things that I've already implemented from this book. Like the reason why you rhyme for your spells and invocations and invites and all that stuff. Like I've already implemented that. I've implemented like there's a like daily thingamajig to say, I don't like to use the word prayer. I feel like that's just a tainted nasty word. I don't, I don't consider it prayer. But it probably is. It's a daily affirmation. And like I've implemented that. Like there's just stuff in here that's so good and there's ritual to do around your tools and I just love this book. And it has a workbook that goes with it so I'm just like I need to own this. So it's on my to-do list. So that is the end of my five star books so far. Obviously I will have more as time goes by but these are the ones that I have currently read and then I will probably do this like once a year or so and just have like a master list of all of my books <laughs> and I think eventually I'm gonna move this to like the end of the year because like that's just easier to keep track to be like here's the books of this year instead of like I don't know at some point nearby and this list will get long because I read a lot of books. <laughs> I've already read I think I'm on my 81st book this year. So like I read a lot of books. So there's plenty for us to discuss just in a year that it's like because my goal is like 200 books a year. So there's going to be quite a bit. So anyways, that is it for my five stars so far. I would love to hear what is your favorite witchy book in the comments down below. Huge thank you to my patrons. I'll have their names here on the screen. If you'd like to me get access to exclusive content, it is patreon.com slash nightwillowcrafts. Make sure to check out my blog. That is where you can find all of my content, including the books that I have written. And very soon there will be my witchy book available. So do keep an eye out for that. Until next time, thank you so much for watching and blessed be.